What's up YouTube? It's your boy Pancake Wizard here and in today's video we're going to be going through my draft analysis video for the first VGC season of the IBA. My friend Salty asked me to be a part of this season after I expressed interest in doing a draft league, so I want to thank him for inviting me to be here, and I'm super pumped because VGC happens to be my favorite format for competitive battling. If you're not sure how a draft league works, I'll try and explain it simply. A set number of coaches will draft Pokemon from a specific list. So in terms of this, we drafted from four different tiers. We had a restricted tier and then we had a G-Max tier. We drafted Pokemon from each tier to build a team up of 11 Pokemon. So before we jump into my picks for the tiers, I just wanted to give a thanks to all the other coaches for the warm welcome. Um, hopefully I will make some friends and um, we'll have fun and nobody will feel too bad whenever I show my stuff. Let's get into my picks for the draft. I um, hope you're as excited as I am and I uh, can't wait to get into it. I thought about maybe going in draft order, but I decided instead to go from top to bottom. So we're going to start with the G-Max Pokemon that I got. I chose G Max Cinderace. Now, I'm going to be quite honest with this pick. Um, this was more of a wild card pick for me, um, considering I have never used a Cinderace competitively. Um, its ability is insane. Uh, it's the same ability, um, basically, that um, Greninja can get with Protean. Uh, so I, th I can't remember how you say it specifically. Um, I think it, I think it's li Libero. I think I'm not, I'm not sure off the top of my head, but basically it changes my type as I attack. So I get stab for every move. Um, so as a Pokemon in terms of having stab attacks, um, it's good because I can learn poison, fire. Um, if, I, if I need to, it can learn electro ball. There's a lot of moves that it can learn, um, but I got to give it to Salty because right before I was going to pick my G-Max, I was actually going to go with G-Max uh, Corviknight instead um for the bulk um but then they made a little announcement and said that we could pick a couple pokemon that were the same the g-max form and the regular form were different so i ended up going with cinderace because of its ability honestly that's the whole reason i picked cinderace i'm really excited to use it as kind of like a swing pokemon like especially against some of these other teams that have a lot of fairy types having that gunk shot is going to come in real handy especially because fire um resists uh, fairy so if somehow someone is faster than me at least my initial uh, typing will 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 kind of quell uh, the strongest typing in the game which ends up 99% of the time being fairy because there's not a whole lot to, to take it out at least fast um, so so that having something that um, can resist if something is faster than me and that can hit back really hard was important because I know how strong fairy can be uh, my second pick uh, for this is from the restricted tier. So this has like a bunch of legendaries basically. And originally I chose Lunala. Um, it was my first pick of the draft. I wasn't really thinking all that much. Everyone else had already picked their restricted mons. Um, and I was like, oh, Lunala's bulky. Let me pick up Lunala. It'll be a really good pick for my team. You know, I'll, I'll build around Lunala. And basically, I ended up forgetting about Lunala and almost negating the fact that I had um, her on the team the entire time. Uh, so uh, the IBA, the way that they work is they give they gave us a 24 hour period to kind of switch our mods if we wanted to um, with the free agents. So I ended up switching my Lunala pick for Eternatus. So instead of Lunala, um, who's a pretty much a bulky special attacker, I switched for Eternatus. Who is still a bulky special attacker, but with a different typing. Um, I gained a poison Pokemon and I gained a dragon type Pokemon. Um, and I and I lost some of my weaknesses that I had before. And I gained a couple really cool moves and a really bulky Pokemon uh, that can use a different held item uh, to gain health back. Uh, I felt like the advantages of having Eternatus on the team rather than Lunala. Um, it, I just needed to get rid of one of my psychic type Pokemon because as you see when we go down the list I had like three and that was a lot to have a dark type weakness to so I decided it was probably time to get rid of one of them and see what I could do with a new Pokemon also the fact that Eternatus is just so new like the the Pokemon itself Eternatus is is a very new mon 
uh, and I was really pumped to try and use him, figure out his, his move sets, figure out a way uh, that he could uh, hit really hard and just be really powerful. Um, so uh, looking at some of the other teams, I figured that Eternus was probably my best bet for my, my team specifically to counteract some other teams. So that's why I chose him. Now we get to move on to tier one. Um, and we're going to move on to the first pick that I chose as like the, the, the Pokemon that I was going to center my team around. So I picked Whimsicott. Whimsicott knows Prankster and it's also one of the fastest Pokemon on my team. Uh, it, it's, it's, it's a crazy good typing with the fairy grass. It's fast. It has uh, the ability to use uh, like some status moves. Um, it also has the ability to be bulky if I needed to. Uh, because it's, its defense stats really aren't as bad um, as you would think they are as well as just hitting really hard because it's special attack uh, can get really high if you put a lot of um, EVs in it. So I went with Whimsicott around a couple specific strategies that I've been used to using in BGC as I've battled before like on the ladder and stuff and all the fun and all the fun stuff. So that was like kind of a Pokemon that I knew how to use. Uh, and that I wanted to bring to the IBA, uh, at least have some strategies. Uh, the biggest, I'm not going to explain all of the strategies, but um, one of them is the Prankster Tailwind uh, can be really, really effective um, if used correctly. So that's one of the things uh, that Whimsicott's really good at um, with the Prankster ability, um, as well as Infiltrator can be really good if I'm not trying to use him as like uh, as a helper Pokemon. So. It all depends on uh, like the specific battle, but I have a lot of strategies with Whimsicott that work with a lot of different Pokemon on the team. And I'm really excited to use him and kind of like uh, switch him around, use him for different things and and and, and maybe uh, scare some people and them, to them not knowing what I'm actually going to be doing with it. Second tier one pick was Landorus Therian. Uh, I picked this Pokemon mostly for Intimidate. Um, I wanted an Intimidate user that could also hit really hard uh, that would make that would bring switches that would make people um, expect something else and with the added benefit of the crown tundra and adding all the legendaries or most of the legendaries in um, bringing Lando back to the VGC format I just had to bring bring the rock sliding boy back into my life um, he's one of the Pokemon I always liked using uh, back in the day I mean everyone does it, it's a it's a hard Pokemon to get around especially whenever you are um, fighting a Landorus. It really only has one weakness, um, which is ice, and that's four times. That's like how you're gonna one-shot Landorus is is with like Ice Beam or or um, like Ice Fang. Uh, so if I can find a way to get around those, um, which I'm 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 figuring out, <laughs> I'm figuring out. Uh, then I think I'll be I think I'll be pretty good. Uh, Landorus is also just notorious for being fast. Uh, a sweeper, a really good mon for flinches, um, and that that's the biggest reason, um, especially uh, with Tailwind, um, Protect, Swords Dance. There's a lot of cool strats with Landorus that I'm excited to try, uh, and I can't wait to break them out for this league. Going into Tier 2, um, I, I actually uh, was pretty surprised uh, because I had a couple different mons in mind. Um, I'll, I'll talk about the, the couple of mons that I wanted first, uh, and then I'll explain the situation for the third mon that I did get for tier two. Uh, so pick one was Lucario. Uh, the one of the biggest things I like about Lucario is uh, Justified. Um, switching him in on like a Dark Pulse or or something that he can 100% take, and then getting that attack boost uh, can be really nice. Um, and now that's that's mostly for singles. Uh, but there's a couple strats with a couple mons on this team uh, that will really boost his attack. And I'm really excited. He's part of like one of the core Pokemon that I really wanted um, for the team. Basically, that he's, he ends up being a sweeper. If I can get him on the team and get his attack up with Justified, or if I can get his attack up at all with like a Max Max Knuckle, um, he's a force to be reckoned with because uh, he has Bullet Punch, which is Priority Steel, which is fantastic against a lot of Fairy types because they're specially bulky. So that's the biggest thing for Lucario is the, the getting that justified ability. Um, he's kind of situational, depends on who I'm fighting, uh, but it can be really, really big to bring him against certain mons. Uh, so I was really excited to get him in the draft. 
So the second pick that I chose was actually Braviary, um, a Pokemon that I expected to get sniped from me, um, with, but didn't. Uh, the biggest reason is Defiant. Uh, it's crazy against Intimidate users. Um, it's, it's, it's one of the best abilities for VGC against an Intimidate team um because it's a free plus one in my attack which um he's a physical attacker he's a bulky physical attacker so uh, raising his attack at all is already one step in the wrong direction um and if i want to switch it up there's also sheer force which is crazy uh, it's an ability that comes in handy uh, with some of its moves but the biggest thing here is the defiant um the defiant with max airstream getting my attack up and my speed up you can't you just can't you can't say anything because the pokemon with its move sets and the fact that it can also learn tailwind uh and so many other great moves for vgc um it's always one of my staples on my teams for generation 8 teams uh like i've used braviary on a lot of vgc teams that i've just like play tested and had fun playing with and i was really excited that nobody sniped it from me because it was one of my all-time favorite pokemon that i really wanted to get and like i said earlier uh my third pick is a little different um, so originally I wanted Gudra, uh, and Gudra got sniped really fast. Um, right after I picked Braviary and Lucario at the end of, uh, at the end of, I think it was like the, the, the second or, or third round. Um, I was like, oh yeah, this is cool. I was like, I got it. I was like, okay, we're going to, we're going to get, pick up Gudra next. Uh, and then, and then I, I didn't get Gudra. <laughs> <laughs> uh so i i didn't get it i didn't get didn't get her so i had to pick up a couple different mons uh and then after crunching some numbers and, and looking at some pokemon i decided to pick up kofagrigus kofagrigus is a mon that i have used extensively when with competitive pokemon battling uh back in generation six um i don't know if anyone who's watching this did any competitive pokemon battling back then um, but like watching shady penguin and all this stuff i was really big into defensive pokemon and kofagrigus is a super like heavy defensive pokemon with a great ability so if you hit um kofagrigus with a physical attack it loses its ability which can be really helpful for a uh, um, for anything like uh, I can ally with the new move actually with ally switch I can switch and then if you hit me physically you lose your ability um, which can come in handy for Pokemon like uh, say Cinderace or, or something that's a physical Pokemon so that's a really good uh, mon to bring on a team um, assault vest is great because I already have such a high physical defense giving me that special defense buff as well as having four attacking moves on a Pokemon that has a decent special attack is also going to come in handy uh, this is also a Pokemon I don't have to worry about speed with. If someone's running a Trick Room team and I need something to do some damage, I can always bring Kofagrigus and that can really help on that front. Uh, so for me, it ended up being a blessing in disguise that Gudra got stolen because I don't think I would be as happy with my team if I would have Gudra instead of Kofagrigus. So actually, the snipe ended up helping my team a little bit because I don't think I needed the Gudra as much as I think I need the Kofagrigus. This leads me into tier three. Uh, this tier is uh, is is weird. Okay, this this tier is is a bit different. Uh, I will I will be honest. Um, it's full of some Pokemon that uh, people probably wouldn't pick for a team, uh, but I'll explain why. Uh, so the Pokemon that I really wanted for my team, in terms of for VGC that I wanted to give a try, was Orbeetle. Uh, it's a psychic bug type, uh, has crazy defenses, it, its health is kind of abysmal, it doesn't really have crazy uh, attack or special attack, but with the ability um, body press, or the ability, with the move body press, it can do so much damage if you dump a lot of stat points into its defense, uh, as well as just like it can, it can set up screens, um, it can take hits, uh, it, it, it's also its ability telepathy is pretty good as well as frisk knowing what the opponent's um, held item is it can be really helpful as well as telepathy with earthquakes and, and all the fun stuff like being able to to not get hit by a pokemon on, my, on our side of the team like landorus who might use earthquake or, or another pokemon i talk about later that might use surf you know there's there's a lot of things that uh that i think orbital will come in handy with and will be able to tank as well as being a bug type because um bug type is actually pretty good 
uh, in Gen 8 comparatively to what it was before um, with a lot of its moves getting buffs and all of that fun stuff. So in terms of a Pokemon that I really just wanted to try, um, I definitely want to give Orbital a shot and see what it can do in the in the VGC format. I've always been uh, a fan of using Pokemon that I like over Pokemon that are just straight good. So I'm going to try my best to make Orbital usable. Uh, the second pick in Tier 3 that I was excited to try out was actually Electivire. Um, Electivire is overall a pretty mad Pokemon in terms of stats. Uh, it has pretty overall, all around, iffy stats in terms of what you want to do. Um, but if a choice banded or a choice scarfed uh, with Motor Drive can come in handy sometimes. Um, I haven't kind of thought about a lot of things I'm going to use Electivire for, but after checking out its move pool and its base speed being 95 isn't that bad. It's actually pretty decent uh, in terms of uh, base speed stats. So I was excited to give Electivire a try in terms of seeing how it could work um, being a Pokemon that comes out with like Whimsicott. Uh, or, or or beetle or one of the other pokemon on my team that are kind of like the bulky setters um, And getting electivire a chance to kind of take something out uh, It has a lot of coverage that will help against ground which is its only real weakness uh, Which in VGC a ground type pokemon with like earthquake isn't as usable because you hit your teammate unless you have the ability to not do that uh, so Electivire was a fun pick uh, I'm really excited to give him a shot and, and, and see how it does. Uh, I, I'm, I'm really, really excited. Uh, this is probably one of my favorite Pokemon, like, actually in the game at all. Uh, so I can't wait to see if I'll be able to spin it in a way that no one will see coming and be able to take some people out. And then we've got my third pick for Tier 3, which is kind of the same thing that ended up happening with Tier 2. Um, I originally wanted Altaria after Gudra got stolen. Uh, Altaria got stolen by the same coach. I'm not going to name any names. I won't, I won't name any names. <laughs> uh, got stolen by the same coach. And then uh, right from under my nose, uh, I wanted Claydol too. Claydol was gone. So I ended up picking up Mesprit. Um, Mesprit has the ability Levitate, which is good. And it is also just like it's, it's psychic. So it can take some hits that I think a lot of people are going to be trying to dish out. Um, because it's uh, it resists a lot of types or oh, not a lot of types, but it resists enough types that I think it will be um, It'll be useful at least for myself um, Now Mesprit reminds me kind of like Mew uh, But with a little bit worse stats um, And obviously a worse move pool, but it's a really good setter. Uh, it learns both the screens um, I have the chance of using light clay to, to make the screens longer. It's not super slow. It's not super fast um, It's decently bulky um, in terms of it's like overall bulk. It's not as bulky as Orbeetle um, But it's actually pretty close uh, So it can be a Pokemon that can lead with like uh, a Pokemon with earthquake or, or that kind of stuff or switch it in on a ground type move if I think something's coming Overall, uh, Mesprit's kind of like an off-the-wall pick. I'm excited to see what I can do with Mesprit. I don't have a whole lot of faith that um, it'll come in handy like all the time, but I think pulling it in battles where it will be useful will really help in the long run for me. And then that leads me to my final pick of the entire draft. Now, there was a tier 4 pick that we got in the uh, in the draft, which was kind of full of uh, like uh, second evolutions and not super strong Pokemon. Uh, like Pokemon basically with a lower stat total, I think, uh, than, than other Pokemon. That was my biggest thing. Um, and I ended up picking Lantern. Uh, this Pokemon can come in handy as it's both of its abilities uh, are two completely separate monsters. And they both raise my special attack. So we have Volt Absorb and we have Water Absorb. Um, they're both going to sit down and they're going to they're gonna help me in one way or another. And I can run either without really it changing my play style. It all depends on who I'm fighting and what I think is going to be better for that specific battle. Uh, I can also learn Volt Switch to get out if I think something's coming. Uh, I can learn Scald to get the burns. It can learn Thunder Wave. It can learn Protect. Uh, there are a lot of things that Lantern has up its sleeve that I think are really helpful, as well as its HP stat 
and its defense stats. I mean, okay, its defense stats really aren't that good, to be honest. They're not fantastic, so I'm not going to try and lie. But its HP stat is so high, and the fact that its speed is decently low, it can be really good if, if I know someone might bring like a water team or a trick room team. Bringing lantern can be really helpful because I'll have a, a water, I'll have a rain boosted scald, or I'll have uh, like if I could bring, if, if I'm like, oh, they might bring a rain team, I'll bring thunder or thunderbolt or something on lantern rather than a volt switch that will be more efficient or I can or, or that, that kind of stuff. So it's 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 kind of up in the air in terms of that. But lantern was a Pokemon that I really wanted for my team. Lantern was actually I think my fourth overall pick for the entire um, IBA because I picked my restricted then I picked both of my tier ones no it was my it was my fifth pick because I picked Braviary Lucario um, Landorus Whimsicott okay it was it was my sixth pick because um, I was gonna pick Gudra and then I picked Lantern instead and that's how I lost Gudra. So I'm really excited for Lantern. I think uh, it's going to come in handy. And I think it's going to be fantastic against some of the teams that I'll be facing. Um, even though it's a little slow, it's bulky enough that I think it's going to be able to take those hits and really dish them back out. And that was my draft. Uh, I'm pretty pumped to see what I'm going to be able to do. Um, uh, next week, we have our first battle of the of the season basically uh if you if you're watching this video right now the first battle is already over so i'm really hoping that i did good i don't know we'll see uh, but if you're rooting for me make sure you hit that like button if you're not uh, it's all right if you're rooting for somebody else all of their uh links should be down in the uh, description below all the coaches make sure you go show them some love it's going to be a really fun season i can't wait uh, to check it out and have fun and just have a blast and see see if I can have a start in draft league content because I'm already having so much fun and I haven't even battled yet. Uh, so I am really excited for this. Uh, the draft was a bunch of fun. I'm hoping that my team is good enough uh, to to stick it out with the big leagues here with the the big dogs <laughs> who've been doing this for a while. Uh, and I, I can't wait to see where it's going to go. So thank you guys so much for listening to my draft. Also thank you. Uh, Wes and, and Salty and Kyogre and, and everyone else in the draft that in the, in the league that uh, has welcomed me with open arms. Uh, it's really nice uh, to, to make some new friends and, and to have some fun and be able to do something different with content. I can't wait for the season and I hope you guys have a wonderful rest of your day. Bye.